Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So today I thought about talking about some issue that uh, many people keep asking about and it's something that is very common with uh, everyone in life. So at one point there's someone who always maybe, who, who sometimes got an accident or they got a diagnosis that uh, rendered them helpless or something but it becomes hard to know how to talk to them or how to or what to tell them and how to start those conversations so it's not even it's not all about conversations but also the things you can do while they are going through this kind of uh, time in their lives so when someone you love falls ill or gets an accident uh, or receive a scary health diagnosis it's never easy in fact it may be the hardest thing you'll ever have to face it's also inevitable uh, that we'll all deal with this kind of situation in life this may come with feelings of shock uh, petrification concern or uncertainty on behalf of your loved one or maybe your friend or anyone else in your life so whatever the feeling it is any sort of health crisis or health scare signals a huge change in your life and it's always frightening your view of how things will be is suddenly twisted or changed and the challenge that comes with that kind of view is that the transformation or the transition it's always so difficult to process and while there may while there may be a set of formula for how to deal there are some key points to keep in mind when providing support to a loved one or a friend or anyone who has gone through that kind of transformation either they've gotten a very bad diagnosis maybe it's cancer maybe it's a uh, something that doesn't give them so much long to be there with you and maybe they might have gotten an accident and it's so scary that they have so little time to be with you or if they is, they have the time they are going through so much pain that you cannot bear so in this video i'm going to focus mainly on ways that you can use to support someone dealing with a health problem or a health crisis and um, I'll be talking about eight points and to start us off when we find people in this kind of situations we always find it very hard or maybe we, we find it hard to get the right words to say to an individual so one thing you need to remember the number one thing you need to remember is that you need to say something to them. So no matter what it is, it is better to say something than nothing. You could tell the person you aren't sure what to say, but you just want to say something and let them know you are there for them. It's okay if you are not sure what to say, but do acknowledge the situation. Try authentic and empathetic statements like... I'm not sure what to do to help, but I care about you. Or, I'm feeling upset too, but want to do my best to help. Those are some things you can use to break the ice. Like, just say either of those words or the ones that you will coin yourself. But make it sound that uh, you are prompting them to have, them to say something that you can be able to use to help them. Second point, don't make it about yourself. Uh, in many occasions, you find that once we see somebody in a bad situation or in a health problem, we always try to twist these things 
and make them almost sound as if it's about us. So, it's human nature to focus on yourself, but try to suppress the natural inclination when speaking to a loved one, dealing with a diagnosis, or maybe an accident or a health care. And try uh, take yourself out of the equation and offer the other person the opportunity to explain how they feel without being imposing. Say something like, it's hard for me to even imagine how you are feeling. Do you want to tell me about it? Or, I've never been in your position, but I'd love to try to understand what it is like. So this one shows that you care and you want this conversation to come from them and they'll be almost feeling very willing to do what? To share with you how they feel and how it is like to be in the position that they are in. A third point to remember, don't put them in a position to ask and it's always common and I'm sure many people use this phrase commonly like let me know what I can do to help. It might be natural to offer to help by saying let me know if you need anything at all. However, that can put a person dealing with an illness uh, in an awkward position of having to think of a way uh, for you to assist them. And that's why it's a little bit awkward for you to tell them, let me know if I can help with anything. So when a friend or a loved one is facing a serious health care, one of the best ways to be truly supportive is to eliminate the burden of making them to ask for help. In other words, pitch in by taking an everyday task off their to-do list, like doing the laundry, making sure the bills are paid, or having dinner ready for their family, or simply offer to go for a walk in the fresh air, so that he or she can open up and uh, vent if need be. You find that people dealing with uh, maybe long-term diagnosis always have this kind of feeling that uh, they are a burden and they need to be taken care of like babies. So they get frustrated along the way and it might not be easy for them to vent out to the people giving them help. So if you can be there for them, you can take them out, out for a walk. Maybe it's, if it is cancer and they can still have that chance to walk, you can take them out, walk with them and talk to them in a way that they might feel very free to talk to you and if they have to if they want to vent they might use that opportunity to vent out what they feel so simple gestures often go a long way anything you can do to provide some fun and normalcy will ease stress for the whole family and even the individual themselves um, another point to remember when supporting that you can use to support somebody dealing with uh, a diagnosis, long-term diagnosis, or a, a health crisis, is to drop the need, dropping the need to be an expert. It's very common. Even if you're a doctor or have dealt with a similar condition, keep in mind that everyone's experience is different. Most people uh, dealing with serious illnesses have a medical team most of the time. So, uh, you will find that we always tend to have ideas of how you can help in treating or alleviating the each and every pain that somebody is going or is having. And sometimes it can be uh, very inconsiderate of you to do so. So, They probably don't need armchair treatment recommendations based on your second cousin's or brother's experience or maybe your uncle. So you can't just go around saying, my uncle had cancer and 
we treated it this and this way. Maybe your uncle had um, correlateral whatever, but this one has something to do with the throat. So how do you compare the two? So you find that the experiences might be very different and it will be inconsiderate of you to now assume the expert uh, persona in this case. So these people sometimes uh, they may not be they may not want you're overly optimistic even if well-intentioned prognosis don't tell the person it will be okay because in reality no one really knows if it will or not also don't assume they are doing fine just because they look fine many health conditions are invisible on the outside so uh, commenting on someone's appearance can feel dismissive or hurtful they might be going through a lot of pain but on the surface they look just fine so assuming that they look fine or this assuming that they are fine or they're doing fine might be really hurtful to them because they're the only ones who know what is going on inside of them um, moving on to another point be of encouragement although you might be wondering try not to ask how are you doing try not to ask how are you doing as it can bring up unwanted reminder so somebody might just be doing well at that time but then by the thought that you've asked them how they are doing they might start feeling the pain all over again instead offer words of encouragement instead like uh, you are amazing uh, your hair looks shiny today maybe uh, your skin looks good so if you do not want to ask about their treatment or their feeling or or how they are feeling try asking things like what is the latest so maybe in a, a few minutes ago they talked to their doctor and the doctor told them this and that so they could share and while sharing they might tell you how they are doing and what their condition is or how their condition is without you necessarily asking them how they are doing yeah uh, on to another point don't take it personally if they dismiss your attempts to talk with them everyone will deal with their illness or condition differently while most people will be relieved to talk about it others may not be as willing to open up either way, either way it's okay and don't press people who don't seem ready to talk about it one of the best things you can say is just tell me if you want me to leave or stop asking you can't offend me yeah so uh, they will know that whatever they say if if they if they want you to talk to them or not you won't feel offended um try to be comfortable with silence don't try to fill blank spaces with chat about yourself sitting in silence may just be what the other person needs so you 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 also find that when they are in this kind of situations you find that sometimes they just want to shut down everything and just be in their own thoughts and as much as people might think that maybe they have gone into things like depression the quiet can sometimes be a healing have a healing effect on an individual and so um being there and talking about yourself or having too much chatter might distract them and they might get angry because anger comes with also uh, such kind of violence has also come with a lot of anger or resentment so uh, it's okay if you just be there and do what uh, keep quiet or stay in silence if they want the silence and don't be so much uh, don't get angry if they turn you away if they tell you they don't want to talk to you today just take it as it is okay so uh, to another point provide a sense of normalcy it's common in each and every 
situation to find people just concentrating on the situation that the person is in. So understand that being there for someone with a serious health issue is a balancing act. They may need support, but they may also be so tired of being a patient. Yeah. So most people always keep on reminding the person that they are sick. You see. So don't do things or don't say things that will remind them that they are sick because they know that. Spending time with them, doing uh, normal activities, sitting and hanging out with them at home, maybe watching TV shows, taking a yoga class, walking their dogs, and having conversations that don't involve their condition can be a much needed respite for them because it's at least something out of what they are going through or something out of the pain that they are feeling or something out of the all the uncertainties that they feel at the moment that they are going through that kind of a thing um last point always be present whenever you can there's often a flurry of activity and assistance immediately following a diagnosis or an accident or a health scare but many people begin to check out after the first couple of days or weeks despite the fact that the person continues to deal with their disease or diagnosis stick around with the long in the long run and try to send a text every so often or another way uh, to show you care maybe you can um, send some basket of fresh fruits celebrate the individual's strength so you, you can always check this is somebody you know you know their strengths maybe they were good in singing if the problem they have does not have anything to do with their voice you can always select the best song that they loved singing and then you sit with them and do what hum the song or maybe just sing the lyrics and you'll find that people like that will feel very relieved because they feel like you still identify their strength even though they are down with their illness so when you have people like that or you have someone going through uh, such kind of a health scare or they have gotten a scary diagnosis or they uh, they have gotten an accident please always remember uh, the eight points that i've talked about and you can also do research on your own and find more ways of dealing with uh, situations like that and just know that it's okay and it's advisable to be there for people even if they don't want you to be there for them the feeling of helplessness always interfere with the way people react or behave when they have uh, such conditions or maybe such kind of health care or health crisis so bear with them and don't take anything personally so up to that point i hope this video will be helpful to you and if you like it please leave a comment share it with people you love or uh, people who need this kind of information and please consider subscribing if you are new here and bye see you next time